What would you say about you know McGill's obviously thing about the, the more of a bracing strategy as far as a non back pain individual who's looking for just a good co contraction of all the global mobilizers that is not bad for let's say a personal trainer to use with a with a supposedly healthy individual. It's, it's, it's the only way you should deal with load. You need to use a mobilizer dominant co contraction to deal with fatiguing loads. So if you're working out with a personal trainer, you're meant to be using meant to be you're meant to be fatiguing. That's why you're there. You're trying to build strength, you're trying to build core power, you're trying to do all those sort of things. So if you're doing strength training, you are meant to be mobilizer dominant and you are meant to be using co-contraction of stabilizers and mobilizers for the mobilizer dominant strategy. And that's normal to do even if you've got back pain. And, you, and you'll use that pattern even if you've got back pain. It's not an abnormal pattern. It's a normal pattern for load. And so I don't think we should, so I think it's, it's fine. I, you know, like there's, we sort of get this debate, oh, we should never, we shouldn't do the loaded work. Of course you can do the loaded work, so long as it's not making you worse. So long as you're clearly not provoking symptoms, and you're using normal physiology for loaded function. You're like, that's fine. Okay. So the, the, we're almost in this paranoia amongst rehab professionals about load. And you're like, it's not valid. <laughs> we can't support it with any of the research or the physiology. <laughs> but, but so yeah, like so. But if you have pain in unloaded function. Doing the loaded work is not going to change your recurrence. That's the other message. Okay, the loaded work is good for performance, for strength, for power, and for endurance. It'll help you deal with load. Whichever has to deal with at least 15% of the daily activity. Even sedentary people have to deal with load 15% of the daily function. Sporting people, that's a high proportion, so they need to be stronger to deal with load. You need to be strong to deal with load. If you're weak, you've got a problem there. But if you've got pain, if you've got a history of recurrence, especially if you also have pain, if you've got someone who plays football or basketball and they get pain playing, but they also get pain driving to training, they get pain sitting on the bench watching the teammates play, you know, they've got pain in unloaded function as well. Strength training is not going to change that pain. <coughs> you need to do the low threshold work. So you have to sort of balance it up. You have to ask your patients, ask the people, when do you hurt? If someone says, I only hurt when I play sport, but I have no pain sitting, standing, walking, driving, then you need only need to do strength work, because that's where the problems are. That's where they're <coughs> more as weak and not controlling movement. If someone has pain associated with non-fatiguing function movements and postures, then we need to do the other end of the spectrum as well. If someone's playing sport, they need the strength for performance, they need the strength for other control mechanisms, they need the strength for the ability to play the game. So they don't injure themselves, or they, or, they, or they can protect themselves when they climb. But they also need to have the motor control to deal with how the muscles work, to deal with their symptoms and the patterns that they work with as well. So would you do bone turns if they're not too acute? Or yeah. I, I don't do one, then the other. I, they're, they're parallel pathways for me. So I can find someone with a strength deficit, I'm training that at the same time as the motor control deficit. But you can't do them in the, in the same exercise. Okay. You've got to use different exercises. And even if I've got local versus global problems, I can't do them in the same exercise. I can't do my dissociation and activate my transversus. That's a waste of time. Because I'm going to shift through the oblique abdominals as a global dominant pattern anyway. Why don't I just focus on my obliques? You know, like, so I'm not going to try and... And so that's the other message. These muscles are, no, are not, you're not going to train local deficits by activating them in interfunctional activities. Because if you activate them while you move, you're not changing the problem anymore. You're just shifting your global dominant pattern and making your brain think more about this muscle. The only way to change these patterns is don't move. Spend a bit of time. Don't try and progress into functional integration of local muscles too fast. Because when, when you start moving into functional integration, you will keep what level of correction you've already got. If you haven't finished the level of correction, then you stop there, and then you go global dominant, so you fail to finish fixing the timing delay. You want to fix the timing delays, don't move, cognitive activation, unloaded, practice it until it's boringly easy, okay, for two to three to four weeks. By then it should have pretty much recovered. But if you only practice it for once or twice, and then you think, oh, we're going to make this functional, you're going to do all the rest of the activation while you're doing functional things like sitting, walking. It's going to plateau out where you started that functional integration, or stay the same in the background.